Black holes are so fascinating and so troublesome because they represent the often problematic collision of quantum theory with classical theory. On the edge of a black hole, it is no longer possible to assume that quantum effects can be ignored on the classical macro scale. Black holes are formed by the gravitational collapse of an object, usually a star, but not necessarily so. They're composed of a singularity, at which point all the mass is centered, an event horizon. Within the event horizon, nothing can move fast enough to escape, not even light. Hence, black hole. And it is almost impossible to say anything definitive about what happens inside the event horizon. Despite the enigmatic nature of black holes, it is possible, theoretically, to compute both the specific heat and entropy. This is thanks to the work of Stephen Hawking. In 1975, combining the ideas of quantum field theory and general relativity, Hawking proposed that black holes emit radiation. The most common explanation of this goes like such. We know that a vacuum is not entirely empty due to phenomena like the Casimir effect. Virtual particles and antiparticles spontaneously appear only to immediately annihilate and leave the time average energy of the universe the same. Now imagine this spontaneous creation and annihilation happening near the event horizon of a black hole. Suppose that a particle-antiparticle pair is produced. Now perhaps the antiparticle gets sucked into the black hole while the particle escapes off to infinity. The antiparticle will actually decrease the mass of the black hole. If this happens frequently enough, the mass of the black hole will decrease while it radiates particles. However, as Stephen Hawking states in his original 1975 paper, this is just to help conceptualize what's going on. In reality, through terribly tedious and horrifying series of equations, you can show that the radiation is a product of the extreme radius of curvature of space-time around the black hole. This curvature creates an indeterminacy in particle number and energy density for certain species of particles, mostly, in our case, photons and neutrinos. Hawking calls this particle creation and concludes that black holes are black body radiators. The temperature of this black body radiation is defined by the following, where h bar is Planck's constant over 2 pi, c is the speed of light, g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the black hole, and K is the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. The most interesting thing to note about this equation is that the temperature of a black hole is in fact inversely proportional to its mass. As a black hole loses mass, it actually increases its temperature. This is odd, but not the strangest result that thermodynamics offers. We can calculate the specific heat of the black hole by using Einstein's famous expression for energy, substituting it into our equation, and then taking the temperature derivative of the energy. Interestingly enough, our resulting expression for the specific heat is negative. When we add energy to the black hole, the temperature decreases. Again, a strange concept, but considering our expression for temperature, it does make sense. Indeed, this does all fit in with Stephen Hawking's predictions of black hole radiation. As a black hole gets smaller and smaller, its temperature increases and it radiates larger amounts of energy. Hawking showed that eventually the black hole becomes so hot that it starts emitting massive particles like electrons. As the black hole continues to get smaller, it will eventually release the remaining contents in a very short and large burst of radiation. Finally, to calculate the entropy of a black hole, we use the following identity. Using separation of variables and the definition of temperature we already have, we find the following. As might be expected, the entropy of a black hole goes as the mass squared. The larger a black hole, the higher its entropy. This does create an interesting conundrum when one considers the mass decrease associated with Hawking radiation. When the mass is slowly radiated away, theoretically the entropy of the black hole decreases. Hawking settles this by claiming that the entropy is carried away with the radiation, which seems very reasonable. But what does it mean for a black hole to have entropy? Most theorists seem to believe that it's a measure of uncertainty about what's inside the black hole. The more massive the black hole, the more possible combinations of matter inside it. Other theorists draw a direct analogy between the entropy and the surface area of the event horizon. The laws of black hole mechanics state that the surface area of the event horizon must always increase and never decrease. And in fact, when two black holes combine, the surface area of their event horizon is greater than their initial sum. However, this law becomes problematic when you consider Hawking radiation. As radiation carries away the mass, the event horizon does decrease. Hawking radiation seems to suggest that black holes don't hold information forever. Eventually, they will evaporate. And as stated, expel their contents. However, this evaporation does take a very long time. Unfortunately, information theory and black holes 
still don't get along very well. It remains unclear whether or not the quantum mechanical necessity of the preservation of information still holds. The question of whether or not information is actually lost inside a black hole has not been answered. Hawking radiation seems to suggest that information can escape, but it might not be the same information that went in. Entropy, entropy. Compute. Compute, Ian. Compute. Field theory? No, don't say that. No.